And uh, Mayor, it's nice to see you here. Thank you for coming. While we certainly don't agree entirely on how to get there, we all agree that a responsible balance between energy development and other public land uses and protections is what this committee is constantly striving to find. So I, I deeply appreciate your willingness to attend today. I might note that in the letter that I received and uh, that was uh, addressed to um, the chairman and the ranking member, uh, the county commissioners of Sublette County, which surrounds Pinedale, um, have indicated that uh, uh, your letter and testimony include an attachment claiming to be a fact sheet about categorical exclusions, uh, but it was far from a factual or impartial collection of information and was in fact pr prepared by an environmental group in Wyoming that has fought energy development in our county. I'm quoting from the county commissioner's letter. The fact sheet doesn't give an accurate presentation of the facts and fails to note that while categorical exclusions are indeed commonly used by our local BLM office for processing applications for permits to drill, that is because the agency has already completed exhaustive environmental impact statements for the development that is currently occurring. Categorical exclusions are used because the analysis has been made and mitigation has already been determined and because the proposed drilling falls within the narrow categories for such use. Uh, and I further commend, uh, Mr. Chairman, this letter to your attention. My question, Mayor Smith, uh, you made several points in your testimony about the financial costs of maintaining and repairing infrastructure in Pinedale, and it has experienced tremendous growth due to energy development. And I agree that those costs can be very significant as a former member of the Board of Land Commissioners in Wyoming, uh, who issues mineral royalty grants to communities, especially impacted areas such as yours. And when I sat on that board, we issued numerous um, grants uh, of federal mineral royalties to your community. You have a magnificent new sizable state-of-the-art aquatic center. I believe your library is the most fantastic library in the state of Wyoming. Uh, you have a magnificent uh, senior and community center uh, all paid for in large part uh, by the mineral production, oil and gas production. Um, you did assert that the energy industry is passing the buck by not funding these improvements. Uh, are the companies operating in Sublette County not paying a sizable royalty on what they produce and half of that money being returned to the state for the very purpose you described, uh, mineral royalty grants for impacted areas through the Board of Land Commissioners in addition to the taxes you receive? Representative Lummis, thank you for the question and good morning, ma'am. Um, good morning. I'll start first with the concerns over categorical exclusions. Um, the county commissions and I are both on the same page as far as trying to do what's best for our community with socioeconomic impacts. Uh, regardless of the source of categorical exclusions, there's no denying that over 1,500 were um, used in our small, very small Pine Dale BLM field office alone. Um, I do find that concerning. Uh, moving on to the resources that we have in Sublet County, we do have a lot of very nice facilities an aquatic center which was paid for by recapture from a school district. Um, county commissioners have been very generous in funding senior centers. My wife works at the library, which is a tremendous facility. Um, that being said, it's not a, ma a matter of how we spend the tax money that come back, rather than my opinion that socioeconomic issues should be considered in records of decision for use on natural, the development of natural resources on, on federal lands. Um, that being said, the town of Pinedale last year and our budget received under $300,000 of direct payment from mineral royalties and mineral severances. So how that system is set up for distribution of those funds are also of great concern to me. And Mr. Chairman, uh, shall I use the balance of my time as now or later? Thank you. Um, in Wyoming, uh, the uh, revenue largely goes to the county. Uh, and as you know, Sublette County is the wealthiest county in the state of Wyoming by virtue of uh, the production of oil and gas in the county. Uh, so is part of the problem perhaps not the fact that uh, the money goes to the county rather than the city? I assume that's a question for me. It is, uh, Mr. Smith. The way that the mineral royalties are distributed amongst the state to the counties and the towns is a matter, is a state issue. 
uh, those decisions are made, the formulas are set up by state statute. Um, so yes, that could be a situation that we need to address at the state level. Uh, the second attachment to my written testimony, if I may, was a letter from all elected officials in Sublette County to the governor of Wyoming outlining s infrastructure requirements and things that we needed to address that our budgets were not, excuse me, that our budgets were not allowing us to do. Um, yes, there are, and I don't forget for a moment that oil and gas industry corporations are taxpayers as well. Uh, but going back to my original theory of we need to have those issues addressed in any of record of decision for small communities uh, that are impacted by drilling on federal lands. Thank you. Um, Mr. Chairman, um, with regard to the document you submitted for the record regarding categorical exclusions used by the BLM Pinedale office, um, the one that was referenced in the county commissioner's letter that says was prepared by an environmental organization, um, raised several questions for me. So I contacted the Pinedale field office of the BLM to directly verify the data. Um, the Pinedale field office told me they found numerous inaccuracies in the document, particularly regarding assertions that the agency office uses categorical exclusions to circumvent site-specific reviews when issuing APDs or that APDs are posted for public comment. And do you stand by the document you submitted? Representative Lummis, the document I submitted was more than anything a courtesy to explain categorical exclusions and how I view them within the Pinedale Field Office. Certainly we can differ on opinions on the source. Um, categorical exclusions have been a very serious concern for locals in my community as well obviously as environmental groups as they in some ways circumvent uh, the policies and requirements set forth by NEPA. And again, I will stand firmly by the fact that I feel 1,500 categorical exclusions in three years is excessive. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that in spite of the fact that environmental impact statements were performed? Yes, ma'am, in spite of that fact. Okay. Mayor, thank you so much for coming to Washington. I now have a question for my former professor, Mark Squalachi. It's not so nice to see you. Nice to see you, Congresswoman. Um, what incentives do you think the bill provides for uranium exploration in Wyoming well, and the United States? Yeah, um, you know, I... I think that it, it certainly allows uranium development to occur in what I would consider to be a more orderly and a fairer fashion for the taxpayer. So under the proposed legislation, there would be a leasing program. There'd be an opportunity for exploration as well. Uh, there would be an obligation to pay a fair royalty to the government if uranium is developed on the public lands. And so um, that's the way all of our other fuel uh, and resources are developed on the public lands. Uh, I don't think uh, the leasing process has unduly hindered uh, that development, and it certainly could occur with uranium as well. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, another question for Mr. Squalachi. You said in your testimony that cheaply developed uranium in Canada and Australia offsets the need to produce uranium here in the U.S. And my question is, does your cost analysis include the negative impacts to jobs and local economies that would hit Wyoming, which is the number one state for uranium production and uranium reserves in the U.S.? Um, our local economies, um, how would they be hit uh, should we drive this industry away to uh, Australian camp? Sure, uh, fair point. I, I don't think this is a question of driving the industry out of the United States. There actually is not very much uranium development in the United States. I believe that in, in Wyoming, north of Cheyenne, there is one in situ uh, um, site that is, I think, the largest in the United States, and there are a few others in other places in the United States. But we develop uh, only about 5% um, of the uranium that we actually use in the United States uh, right now. Um, and, and you know, what has kept, I think, uranium mining out of the United States under the current regime has simply been the low price of, of uranium. Now, it spiked, as you know, I'm sure, a couple of years ago, but it's, it's back down to, I think, $43, $45 a pound from uh, being up uh, upwards of, I think, 140 So um, I think it's really the price of uranium that has, uh, that has limited development and we, we haven't seen a substantial amount of development. I don't really think, I don't know the numbers of jobs that uh, exist with uranium, but as I said, it's such a small amount of development of uranium in the United States that we're not talking about a lot of jobs. 
uh, under the, the proposed legislation, these existing operations, to the extent that they're on public lands, would be allowed to convert. Uh, again, because we're dealing with a, a hazardous kind of material, uh, the, the leasing program would allow what I think would be better management of these resources and better assurance that we could reclaim the sites in a reasonable uh, manner. And, and that's, as you know, been a problem with many of our abandoned uranium mines in the past. So, um, so I think that the bill certainly uh, acknowledges the importance of developing uranium domestically if, if uh, the market is there to do it, but it also acknowledges that in terms of our strategic need for uranium, that we have friendly countries who are in a position to provide it if we can't or economically are not interested in providing it ourselves. Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member, thank you very much for the opportunity to provide questions, and thank you, panel. The gentleman from Washington and the general